Chris Brown, Steve Tasker with you on the heels of Buffalo's 24-10 victory over the Patriots last night to improve to 9-3 and on the season, get their first division win of the year, and momentarily hold the top spot in the AFC East. Time for us, though, to welcome in senior producer from NFL Films and co-host of the ESPN NFL Matchup Show, one Greg Cosell joining us on the line. And, Greg, uh, long night last night for all of us. You're up bright and early chopping up the tape. Yep. Um, give me your maybe initial takeaways from the Buffalo performance. Well, I really loved what the offense looked like. We've talked so many times about how great Josh Allen is and arguably – you could argue that he's the most gifted quarterback we've ever seen. Um, and to rely on his physical gifts all the time is really, really difficult. And sometimes I sense that that's the way they play. And last night, I thought with the run game being what it was, with the use of personnel, which we'll get into in a second, but I almost felt like, guys, when I watched the tape, because, you know, watching the tape is always different from watching the game. And I did watch the whole game on TV last night, but I almost felt, as if watching the tape, that the Bills' approach was, we are better than you, and we are just going to line up and play and physically control the game. That's kind of the way I felt watching the tape. And mm -hmm. obviously, when you play that way, not every run is a dominant run, but I felt like they lined up and said, you know, we're going to control the game. The run game's going to be a factor. We'll, we'll throw it. Obviously, they're going to throw it. But it, it was not a game in which they said to Josh Allen, you have to be Superman in order for us to win. In fact, their longest pass play came on the first possession when Josh left the pocket and did that little push pass to Naheem Hines. That was their longest pass play of the game. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, too. We were, we've been talking about how it seemed like the coaching staff had a, always had a big picture mentality saying, listen, we're, they're not going to score enough points to beat us, so we're going to do some things to try and right. – to control the game, basically. They had 38 minutes plus of time of possession, and just it just never really looked like the Bills believed that this game was in doubt, even though it was, a, a, for a long, large part of the first half, a, a one-score game, two-score sure. game. Um, how do you... Are we off our rocker thinking that this there's a team out there that wouldn't just go out there and say, hey, listen, we're going to try and run these guys into the ground no matter what? Um, are we? Uh, do teams? Do you really think there's a possibility the Bills that listen? We're we're going to win this game, so we're just going to run the football and get some things on film, screw up some tendencies, do some things like that for our future opponents. You mean as opposed to to making somewhat of a transition to trying to run the ball on a weekly basis? Um, yeah, that's a tough thing to answer. I mean, look, they had a 14 play 56 yard drive in the second quarter that took almost eight minutes off the clock, Steve. And they had eight runs and six passes. Then they had the 15 play 96 yard drive, which featured eight runs and seven called passes. When do we really see the bills play that way? So the question is, did they do this just last night? Because obviously the goal was to win last night right. or is this something they feel that they have to do in order to become a better team overall? Because um, as we've said many times, it's hard to play every week in this league just to ask your quarterback to be special all the time, as special as Josh can be. You know, last night, Hines played more snaps by far than he played in any previous game. They had 13 snaps of the pony package where they had both Hines and another back in the game. It was it was Cook. They ran it 13 times. It was Cook and Hines 12 times. It was Singletary and, and uh, Hines one time. 12 of those 13 times, they put Hines in motion. They basically ran the ball from the pony package. They did not throw it very much. So they started to do some more things that my guess is it's probably a little bit of both. They want to show defenses some things that they now have to prepare for, but I think they probably also feel that these are things that can now help our offense. I mean, Cook's 28-yard run came out of the pony package. Right. Yeah, I I think it is the latter. I was talking to Steve earlier in the show. I had a conversation back and forth with Stephon Diggs during his post-game press conference in Detroit last week when they were relatively – they weren't perfectly balanced, but they were running the ball more. They did the same thing yep. against Cleveland. 
uh, where they, you know, made a concerted effort to run the football as well. I'm going to give you Diggs' quote on this because I think this sheds some light on where they're trying to go with this offense. He said, I feel like we're finding the balance, the real balance. In past years, we've been pretty pass heavy, but Motor and the running backs do a great job. I feel like we're finding other ways to win, and it's actually helping us. We might not be as sharp yet in all those other areas, but we're working at it. I feel like we're growing as we're going. To me, that says they are looking to be a complete offense that can win in any way necessary in a given week. Now, how successful they are with that as time goes on remains to be seen, but it seems like there is a concerted effort here, Greg, to be a complete offense that can win a multitude of ways and not just in the way that has become the signature of the Bills offense the last two years. And I think, Brownie, that that's a great point, and I think Diggs is right. Because to me, look, we know how phenomenal Josh Allen was in the two playoff games last year. He was on a record pace, and obviously they lost to the Chiefs. And he played sensational football, and he's capable of that any time because he's that gifted. But normally, and Steve, I think you would agree with this, having been on teams that got to the Super Bowl four times, and you know what that's all about, is you have to be able to win multiple ways to be a great team. If you can only win one way, sure, if a guy gets super hot, if Josh you know, Allen is super incredibly hot like he was, that's great. But it's hard to say, hey, he has to be that way all the time, or we don't have a chance to win. So, what you said, Brownie, about Diggs, and Diggs has been around the league a long time. I've never met him, but he strikes me as a guy that's pretty sharp about yeah. the game and about how it's played. Um, I think his statement is 100% right on the money. You've got to be able to win in multiple ways to be a great team. Well, one of the reasons you got to do that and get, be ready for that, and certainly there are teams that don't feel like they don't try to do this, but I think the reason you do is because at this point of the season, even this deep into a regular season, you don't know the matchup that's going to be a win, one and done game. Correct. You may get matched up with a a Baltimore Ravens team or, the, or, Titans or the Titans for that matter, or you might get matched up with a Chiefs or a Miami team that where you're going to have to score 30 plus points. You don't know what's going to be required of you, and you got to find out what you got and what you can go to. When you do get the matchup in a game, either for the division title coming up or in a playoff game where if you don't win, you go home. So you really or, do need to find out. <clears throat> or, or Steve, the other thing, let's say you get into a playoff game. Let's say it's Baltimore, you know, whatever team it is. And by chance, you get up in the third quarter and you're up 21-10. OK, you want to be able to run the ball to some degree. It doesn't mean you're handing off every single time. But at that point in time, look, I remember the game. Which game was it a few weeks ago um, where they got the ball in the fourth quarter and they were ahead? The, and it was they, the Packers. Was the pack? Was it the Packers? I think so. And they so, threw maybe. it three times in a row, and they didn't. They basically didn't use any clock, and they right. were. I believe they were winning the game at the time. I wish I could remember the specific game, but you know, and that's why I thought that when they got the ball in this game, uh, and it was late in the game. Okay, they started the fourth a qu fourth quarter possession leading 24-7. Their first five plays had six O-linemen and two tight ends. And the first four plays, uh, they, well, they actually had a, had the quick slant to, to Diggs on third and one, um, which was actually a very nice play call given the fact that, that of what personnel they had. But I think you want to be in a situation, guys, where you can do that, where you can line up and say, hey, you know what, we're going to run the ball now. And, you know, we know that you know we're going to run it, but we're going to run the ball. And you're going to have to stop us from running the ball. And by the way, I don't think their O-line is a great O-line by any means, but I think this helps their O-line. You, yeah. you know, Steve, how O-linemen love to run block far more than they like to be reactive in pass protection. Yeah, I and, thought, I thought And they didn't was, have Dawkins last night. Right, I thought that was a tactic Correct. they used because Dawkins wasn't there and they were struggling on the edges last night. It's even one more yeah. reason why just run at a, at a speed edge rusher, sometimes the best strategy is to run right at them. Yeah. And, and push them out of the way, uh, and which is, I think, part of yeah. the plan going in, if they had a chance to do it, 
to help their offensive line by giving the defensive line a little something more to think about than just putting their ears back and chasing Josh Allen all over the yard. Yeah. No, and, and, and you know, Josh is phenomenal. We know that. But Josh does have a tendency at times to break down in the pocket a little early because he knows he can make plays with his legs. And, you know, you don't want to get caught up in that where he's he ends up being a runaround quarterback. Obviously, he can make special plays. Look, that play, the touchdown to Davis was as special as it gets. But you can't live like that. You can't live with the idea that he's going to make those kinds of plays all the time. We get used to it and we think it's going to happen, but you can't assume that's going to happen. Yeah, um, we haven't seen this personnel grouping in weeks. I think all season. There might be four total plays run out of 10 personnel. They ran yeah, four, four last, last night. night, Greg, and yep. they ran it every single time. Four carries for 27 yep. yards. They ran it on first and 20. They ran it yep. again on second and 10. They ran it on second and eight, and they ran it on second and seven, mostly with James Cook, but four carries, 27 yards out of 10 personnel. Maybe explain how spreading the field that way helps when you have a back like Cook in the game. Well, when you spread the field, what you're essentially doing is you're changing run support because obviously you're always going to have D linemen and they're responsible for the first level. But then you start getting to the second and third level and there's run support players that are primary run support players, meaning their number one responsibility is to play the run. So if you're lining up, let's say, in a normal personnel package and you have two stacked linebackers, okay? They have primary run responsibilities. But if you're going to spread the field, sometimes what happens with those guys is they have to stretch out a little. So instead of being stacked players, they become overhang players or they become they bump out over the slot and you change the way run support is dealt with and it benefits you because now you're limiting second level defenders. And so even if your first level does a pretty good job, let's say your back cuts back, there may be no defender there for the cutback because the second level defenders have been removed or expanded. So it really can help your run game. And and just getting back to Cook, we saw last night, look, Cook has we're not going to sit here and say who's a better back. Singletary is, what, a third-year back at this point or a fourth-year back? Fourth year, yeah. So he's got a lot more experience, but Cook just has more explosive juice to him, and you can see that when he carries the football. I'm going to ask you a little something about the other side of the football. Tremaine Edmonds oh, yeah. was back in the lineup. Uh, Milano was healthy. They got Tredavious White on for a bunch of snaps last night. Yep. Uh, Xavier Rhodes was on the field for the, really the first time uh, last, last night. Extended uh, time. Extended yeah. time. And the defensive line, you know, uh, got one sack out of the game, but really held the New England rushing attack to yep. being a negligible factor in the game. What do you think of the way the Bills' defense have played, and and what do you have? What are your thoughts? Loved it. Obviously, we know they played nickel on every snap. Um, look, run defense. Part of run defense is often winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. We know that. You know, obviously, there's scheme involved. There's the way you align your front. There's the way you use your linebackers to fill, but. Oftentimes, run defense is about winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I thought they won their fair share of one-on-one -on -one matchups. I can remember a few offhand. I thought Lawson beating uh, tight end Henry on a one-yard run by Harris. That was uh, in the first half. That was a really good play. Epinesa beating the, the left tackle of Brown, I believe it was. in the I believe it was the Patriots' first third-quarter possession. Um, actually, Milano did a really good job there as well. He forced Stevenson to bounce. Um, you know, just... There's a play that that um, uh, Edmonds made, which was actually the result of what um, uh, Phillips did. He made the play with his quick penetration of the ball, preventing Andrews from pulling cleanly to get out in front and block Edmonds. And then Edmonds, you know, made the tackle, and it was a great job by Edmonds. But he he needed to be blocked by the puller, and and. Phillips stopped that. So I thought their run defense was really, really good. I, they played a ton of zone. That was the game plan. They didn't play much man. They didn't pressure a lot. Um, they had some pressures, some zone exchange pressures where they brought a second level player, but still only rushed four. But I thought they played really well. And, and I thought in watching the tape, I thought Mac Jones did not play well at all. Yeah, I was going to ask you, as much as we want to give credit to the Bills defense, which, you know, played a sound fundamental game for the most part yeah. defensively how broken is the Patriots offense um 
you know, I always hate saying this because it comes across as a rip on coaches. And, and you guys know me well enough to know that I do not rip coaches because I know how hard I work. So therefore, I know how hard they work when they've got 25 people working and it's just me. So I don't sit here. There's so much I don't know. So I don't sit here and say, oh, bad game plan, bad this, bad that. But I, I, I sense watching the Patriots all year, and it was certainly noticeable last night, I, I'm struggling to f- figure out what their offensive identity is. You know, do they want to be a running football team to start? Do they want to throw? What You know, what are they right now? And I, I'm not sure. Now, I'm sure if they had a coach here, they'd tell me, they'd give me an answer. But I don't know. And I think Mac Jones is the kind of quarterback that needs a complete offense. He needs everything working. He's not a overly talented guy. You know, he's a guy that is efficient. Um, He needs the scheme to work for him to present the reads and the throws. I thought last night he missed some things. The intentional grounding call was on Mac Jones all the way. It was a three-step drop. It was slant flat. I mean, the the slant was wide open. You got to throw the ball. You know, so he he had a number of those plays last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I and I I would agree with you. What about uh, the run defense of the Bills? I've, I've, it's been something that is a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, and also last night, once again, they they were they didn't do it last night, but they almost did. They get this team into a third and fifteen or a third and eleven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they give up a. Th- 14 yard play or a 10 yard play. And yeah, I was, that was surprised. After the grounding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, surprised no. yeah. that Bill Belichick, given the atmosphere that they're living in over there, that he didn't say, you know what, we got to get this yard. Let's go. Um, even yeah, well, they were in. very deep in their territory because that was after the, uh, the grounding. And, and that was in the first half of the game. So he probably felt there was a lot of game left. Um, you know, but just talking about the Patriots, again, no knock on the coaches, but I just didn't quite understand that final drive. And, you know, I put some of that on Mac Jones. you got to turn the ball loose. You know, I don't know when exactly what the time was, Brownie. Maybe you remember when they got the ball trailing 24-7 in the fourth quarter. You know, you can't throw checkdowns. you got to throw the ball. You know, and I'm not saying you just throw it up for grabs, but there were throws mm. to be made there when I watched the tape. And, you know, he, he didn't turn it loose. That's when you got to turn it loose. That's yeah. when you got to take a shot. You know, Throwing a four-yard check down at that point, you know, they end up with a really long drive, whatever number of plays it was. 17. I mean, yeah, 15 plays, and they end up with a field goal. You know, again, it's going to come across like I'm ripping the coaches, but I think Mac Jones bears some responsibility as well. Watching the tape, there were throws to be made. Yeah, it reminded me of Trent Edwards a lot. Um, You know, throwing two yards short. Oh, the the old Stanford quarterback. Yeah, throwing two yards short of the sticks on third down taking a field goal when you're down by three scores, you know, in the fourth quarter. It's just, it's, it reminded me, unfortunately, and of the Dick Duran era and, you know, Trent Edwards throwing the ball around. That's, that's what it Look, looked I'm like to me. I'm not saying they could have won the game, Brownie, but let's say you get the ball with whatever they got it and they get down and score in four plays and all of a sudden it's 24-14 with five minutes to go. I'm not saying they win the game, but the right. whole feel of the game changes for that moment. Yeah, at least sure. you make it interesting. Uh, last thing yeah. that I wanted to throw at you, and I know we'll talk more about this next week, Mike White, a quarterback for the Jets, yep. Buffalo's next opponent. He has played the Bills before. He did it last November. It didn't go well for him. I remember. 24 of 44 for 251 and four picks. No touchdowns. They lose 45-17. I realize the Jets are a different team this year. Their defense is, you know, top 10. They're legit. Um, Mike White had a good first first start last week, as we know. The same can be said last year when he came in and played Indianapolis um, in relief, and he had a good game against Cincinnati uh, on Halloween last year, and then it kind of went the wrong way after that. Um, do we think that his one start last week shows us anything different about his game than the Bills saw last year? Well, Brownie, I don't want to cop out, but I think we got to wait to see him play this week. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was one start. He played extremely well. I thought the coaching staff did an outstanding job early in the game, giving him basic concepts, basic reads and throws so he could settle into the game. He did have a couple of plays where he clearly read coverage well, read, read safety rotation, understood what it meant, understood where to go with the ball. So I'm not going to say he didn't play well or it doesn't mean anything. Hey, Steve, you know you play in an NFL game and you play well. That means something. It's hard to do. You know that. So I'm not going to say it doesn't matter, 
but I think we need to see a little bit larger sample size before we decide what he is or what he can be. Um, but I think the Bills defense, I think it's savvy. It's smart. I love watching Poyer. He made an unbelievable play on a screen where he read the guard starting to pull immediately. You know, they just have a smart, savvy defense. Milano is phenomenal. You know, Edmonds is a good player. You know, let's see how the Jets play this week, and then we'll reconvene next week. And Because obviously yeah. that's going to be a very big game because the Jets already beat them. Right. Well, everybody here in Buffalo is going to be watching the schedule this week as Miami takes on the 49ers yep. and the Kansas City Chiefs uh, take on the Cincinnati Bengals. What matchups are you looking at this weekend? Because uh, this is a really good weekend for NFL. It's football. a really good week. I mean, uh, Miami, I'm fascinated to see how Kyle Shanahan and that staff, D'Amico Ryans, defend Miami because they know all the, the principles and concepts of that offense because it's their offense. I'm so curious to see how they defend it because you watch the Dolphins sometimes, guys, and it just looks like pitch and catch. And, you know, I'm so curious about that. And then I'm really curious about KC and Cincinnati because KC in their in their sub packages on defense starts two corner, rookie corners on the outside and the uh, Bengals are a heavy 11 personnel team, and there may be no quarterback in the league who's as aggressive throwing the ball vertically outside the numbers as Joe Burrow. Yeah, and he may have Jamar Chase back this week as well. That's possibly, what they're saying. Yeah, yeah possibly Joe saying. Mixon too. Uh, and yeah. they're very, very quietly on a three-game winning streak. They're kind of picking up momentum just like they did last year at yeah. this time when they made their run. Greg, thanks as always. Enjoy your weekend of football. That's we'll catch great. up with you next week. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks. Greg Cosell's weekly segment is presented by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills.